There was um, a lot of questions for vein grafts. There were four studies done so far, and one should harm and three should benefit. And there's always been a question, okay, are the vein grafts behaving the same way as the native coronary arteries? So this study started actually many years ago, about more than 10 years ago, the planning and doing all the steps. And the question was, do drug eluting stents behave the same way as the bare metal stents do? The previous studies, uh, they had some questions about, uh, um, there was no blinding, uh, there were uh, first generation drug eluting stents, uh, issues with geographic follow-up, which can inflate the rates of revascularization. So the whole idea is to create a very robust assessment of how are the vein grafts behaving in uh, saphenous vein graft lesions. So these are patients who came in and had vein graft lesions, and uh, the typical patient is a man, uh, older man, so the mean age was like 69. Because it was done in the VA system, um, about um, all, almost all the patients were men. And these are patients who come into the cath lab and they have a clinical indication for putting a stent. Uh, about half have previous myocardial infarction, 60% have diabetes. Uh, these are people with a lot of comorbidities uh, as well. So we randomized people, uh, 597 people were randomized to drug eluting or bare metal stents. And then they were followed clinically and the primary endpoint was the one year target vessel failure rate. And that was the composite of death, myocardial infarction and target vessel revascularization. Now what we found is that there was no difference between drug eluting and bare metal in the primary endpoint. And then we looked at the full follow up, which was 2.7 years median follow up time. So much more um, longer follow up. And there was still no difference. It was the curves were uh, on top of each other. No difference in any of the secondary endpoints in terms of mortality, myocardial infarction, target vessel revascularization, tagline revascularization. Everything was similar in the two groups. So in a way, uh, it was a little surprising because we were expecting to see benefit of drug eluting stents, as it has been shown in multiple other geographic subsets. But in this particular case, there was no such a difference. So the both groups were identical in terms of their clinical outcomes. You know, drug eluting stents are obviously more expensive. And if you have similar outcomes with bare metal and drug eluting stents, then you should probably use the cheaper version. So, you know, I think based on what we're seeing that bare metal stents have very good results in vein grafts and therefore they can be used in subgroup without being concerned that we have uh, suboptimal outcomes for the patients. But I think the other component is that despite all that, with both groups, the event rates were fairly high. I mean, you have like about 7-8% mortality at one year, high rates of TVR, high rates of TLR. So I think uh, we realize, and people have seen in the past, that vein grafts, once they start failing, they don't do very well no matter what you do to them. So the question is, what can we do to make the outcomes better? And one potential possibility is to open the native instead of the vein graft. Now that can be complex because they often have a CTOs and other complex lesions. But if the native can be recanalized, that might be a preferred way to, preve to prevent uh, the stenosis and the recurrent failure of the saphenous vein grafts. Actually, we do want um, uh, to do a study in which people with vein graft lesions are randomized to either the fixed vein graft or fixed the native coronary, whether it's complex or a CTO or whatever lesion it is. And the hope is that by doing that, then that randomized study will show that treating the native that would be beneficial. Now the challenge there is to do these complex lesions, you have to have expertise, a lot of experience in doing these CTOs, bifurcations, calcified lesions, so it may not be available on everyone in every cath lab right now, but the hope is that as things go by, more and more people will be able to tackle these complex lesions successfully.